shift gears next and talk about setting good goals. And for this, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about a goal setting process that I learned at Google that we have used religiously at storytelling with data over time. And that is objectives and key results, OKRs. We actually, at Storytelling with Data, we just finished setting our 35th quarter of OKRs, uh, which felt like a crazy big number. We've been doing this for 10 years. We've missed a couple quarters. I think that was mostly from maternity leaves. But we, for the most part, very consistently on a quarterly basis, set ambitious goals and assess ourselves against those goals. So OKRs are made up of two pieces. There's the objective, which is the goal, right? This is what you're setting out to accomplish. It should be ambitious, but realistic, and you want it to communicate action. Typically, you'll have a handful of these. We're going to focus on just setting one for our path today on uh, becoming a data viz superstar. So the objective is supported by key results. And these are the how, right? How you're actually going to make that objective happen and meet it. So the key results, they're specific. It is critical that they are measurable. So typically, they're, they're time-bound in some way. It might be a deadline or a frequency with which you want to do something. So they're specific, they're measurable, they're limited in number. Usually, three to five-ish key results will support a given objective. I mentioned this, but we do this process quarterly. And quarterly cadence, for me, is perfect because it is a long enough time horizon to take on meaty things, but not so long that we run the risk of getting off track by too much or being totally out of sync with maybe the company uh, objectives. And one important process, and this might be the most important part of the OKR process, is not just setting the goals on a quarterly cadence, but also assessing your progress against them on a quarterly basis. So at the beginning of the quarter, we set our OKRs. We talk through them with each other, give feedback, refine. It's usually a couple week process. And then at the end of the quarter, we go back and we assess ourselves of how we did when it comes to what we set out to accomplish. We actually grade our OKRs. We do that on a simple scale of 0 to 10, which 0 means I didn't get to it at all, no attention. 10 means you did everything you set out to do. And then we use the numeric whole number scale in between. So as I go through these example key results, right? the first one, maybe I mostly did it, but there was a component that didn't get done. The second one, maybe not a lot of attention was paid there. We started it, but didn't make a lot of progress. And this final one, let's say we did everything we were meant to do. Now, the specific numeric values aren't so important. The important thing is the kind of self-reflection and conversations that they drive. Right, that four, for example, would cause me to really think about, well, what happened there? Did priorities change and that was on purpose and that was okay? Or was this something important that I just didn't devote enough time or attention to? So that then can change how I might look forward to the coming quarter. And then we can take our grades for our individual key results and average those for our grade for our objective. Then we can say, if our key results were met, then we met our objective, or we can assess to what extent we did so. And then in the case where you have multiple objectives, you can average across those. Don't usually recommend taking the average of an average, but I think here it's OK. That'll give you a signal overall for the quarter, which can be something that's then is interesting to be able to reflect on over time. Let's take a look at an example. So this is from a client uh, with whom we work. Uh, they are in the manufacturing space. So they have a ton of data about production and inventory levels and so forth. And they work on communications that go to the leadership team, and in particular, the president of the organization. 
And historically, they have communicated their data primarily through tables. And in fact, when they've tried to use graphs, they've been met with some resistance. Where typically, when they put in a graph, the first question they get back is, can I see all of the data? And there was one, though, individual who was persistent and said, no, I really feel like we can be doing more. We can be bringing more attention and insight to the important aspects of the data if we visualize it. And so he kept at it. He read books and started applying what he was learning, not in the communications that go to the president, but in other lower risk places first. And actually, the president was meeting with someone who happened to have, I don't know if it was on their computer screen or in a folder, but happened to have one of the communications that this individual had created for somebody else and said, why doesn't my stuff look like that? So now there's an opportunity, right? And a new understanding, because now it's clear. It wasn't that the president didn't like graphs. It was that she didn't like confusing graphs. So now knowing this, there's renewed energy on the part of this individual to want to move the team around them beyond tables for how they communicate with data. So think about what the objective and key results could look like in this particular scenario. The objective might simply be to help move people beyond tables and start to graph the data that is in the communications going to the president and the leadership team. We think specifically about how we might accomplish this and take steps towards it in the coming quarter. Perhaps having a weekly meeting time set aside to discuss best practices with colleagues would be one way to keep this on people's minds, get them thinking about it. As an individual, I could also focus on continuing to sharpen my own skills. I might look to a specific category of exercises in the community in order to do that. And by the way, the search and filter functionality in the Storytelling with Data community is fantastic for this because we have everything tagged with the core lesson. And that means you can filter to get specific resources on what you're trying to develop and be served up articles and podcasts and exercises that are really specific to that given lesson. So be sure to check that out. As another result, I can think about specifics for integrating graphs in the different communications. So maybe I want to aim for one in February, learn from that and iterate, get three graphs into our communications by the time of the quarterly business review and have those graphs work in a way that uh, gets rid of that request for seeing all of the data. And you can imagine when I go through things um, this specifically, uh, at the end of the quarter, I can really assess how I did, right? And to what extent I met my objective which means then I can reflect on how I can push things even further forward when it comes to the next quarter. All right, so we've spent some time on goals. And actually, there was a podcast done a couple of years ago. If you'd like to hear more about the OKR setting process and additional examples, you'll find that on the podcast page. Search for goals like Google. It was episode 13. Thank you.